When neuroscientists went looking for the self inside your brain, they expected to find something, a control center, a little you sitting in there making all your decisions, but they found nothing, no CEO, no commander, just a web of neurons firing in patterns. And here's where it gets wild. Quantum physicists found the exact same thing when they looked at reality itself. The observer effect in quantum physics proves that consciousness isn't located anywhere. It's everywhere. Watching, creating. By the end of this video, you'll understand why the observer in quantum physics and the observer in your mind are the same thing, and why that changes everything about who you think you are. But first we need to clear up the number one mistake that 99% of people make when they hear about the observer. Most people confuse the inner commentator with the observer, and I get it. They both feel like they're watching your life from the sidelines, but they're completely different. Your inner commentator is that voice in your head that never shuts up. It has three modes. Narrator mode. I'm walking to the kitchen. I should probably eat something healthy, but pizza sounds good. Critic mode. Why did you say that? That was so awkward. Everyone thinks you're weird. Hype mode. You got this. You're amazing. Today's gonna be great. The inner commentator is the voice that guides you during meditation. The one that says you're doing great or stop thinking so much. It feels peaceful, separate, like it's not caught up in your drama. That's why it's so easy to confuse it with the observer. But here's the key difference. The inner commentator talks. The observer watches. The inner commentator judges. The observer accepts. The inner commentator is personal shaped by your past, your fears, your ego. The observer is universal. It's the same in everyone, and in exactly 90 seconds. I'll show you how quantum physics proves this isn't just philosophy, it's measurable reality. So what is the observer? The observer is pure awareness. It doesn't think. It doesn't react. It just is. Think of it like this. Your thoughts are like a movie playing on a screen. The inner commentator is a character in that movie, narrating what's happening. But the observer, the observer is the screen itself, the space where the movie plays. And here's where quantum physics comes in. In the famous double slit experiment, scientists discovered something impossible. Particles behave differently when they're being observed. When nobody's watching, an electron acts like a wave mice existing in multiple places at once. But the moment you observe it, it collapses into a single point, a particle. The act of observation creates reality, not the scientists' thoughts, not their beliefs, just pure awareness watching. That's the observer, not your personality, not your ego, just awareness itself. And here's the mind-bending part. The observer watching your thoughts right now is the same observer that collapsed that electron in the lab the same awareness that's been watching since the universe began. Stay with me. This gets even wilder. If you sit in deep meditation long enough, you start to notice something bananas. The observer isn't yours. The same awareness watching your thoughts right now is the exact same awareness watching mine. Your neighbors, a monk in a Himalayan cave, some guy zoning out on a subway in Tokyo, what changes is the content. Your thoughts are different from mine. Your memories, emotions, experiences, all different. But the space that notices all of it, identical, universal, untouched. It's like the ocean. The waves on the surface are all different. Some big, some small, some crashing, some calm. But the ocean itself, the water, it's all the same. Your personality is a wave. The observer is the ocean. This isn't new. The ancient Upanishads called it Atman, the eternal self. The Bhagavad Gita calls you the eternal witness. Buddhism calls it Buddha nature. Even Einstein hinted at it when he said, a human being is part of the whole called by us universe. But here's what the ancient texts didn't have. Quantum physics proof. And in the next section, I'll show you exactly how the observer effect proves consciousness is fundamental to reality. Let's get scientific for a minute. 
The observer effect doesn't just happen in fancy labs. It's happening right now. In your body, in your brain, neuroscientist Sir John Eccles and physicist Roger Penrose discovered that consciousness might operate at the quantum level inside your neurons. Tiny structures called microtubules might be where quantum processes create conscious awareness. That means the observer in your mind and the observer in quantum physics experiments might be the same mechanism. Pure awareness collapsing possibility into reality. When you meditate and watch your thoughts, you're doing the same thing a scientist does when observing a particle. You're not controlling. You're not judging. You're just watching. And that act of watching changes what you're observing. Your anxious thoughts lose power when the observer watches them, not because you're fighting them, but because observation itself transforms them. Just like the electron collapses from a wave to a particle when observed, your thoughts lose their grip when pure awareness watches them. And in exactly 60 seconds, I'll give you a simple technique to access the observer right now. No years of meditation required. Let's make this crystal clear. Your inner commentator is rooted in the mind. It's shaped by your past, your upbringing, your society, your fears, your desires. It's constantly recycling old patterns and projecting them onto your present and future. The more you work on yourself meditation, therapy, personal growth, the more refined the inner commentator becomes. It gets gentler, wiser, more supportive, but it's still not the observer. He observer exists outside of time. It's not tangled up in your past. It's not worried about your future. It exists purely in the present moment. While the inner commentator talks, the observer listens. While the inner commentator analyzes, the observer simply is. Here's the proof you can feel right now. Think about yourself at age five. You were completely different. Different body, different personality, different beliefs. Now think about yourself at 15. Again, totally different person. And today, you've changed again. But the awareness watching, the you that noticed the world when you were five, that's the exact same awareness noticing it right now. That's the observer. The one part of you that never changes. Everything else about you has shifted. Your body replaced every cell. Your personality evolved. Your identity transformed. But the observer, untouched by time, unaffected by trauma, immune to every story your mind has ever told you. And this isn't just beautiful philosophy. This is the same awareness that watched the universe being born. The same stillness the stars reflect in their silence. You've been here all along. But how do you actually access this observer? That's next. The observer isn't some modern mindfulness trend. This has been explored by the greatest minds in history. The Upanishads, some of the oldest spiritual texts on earth describe the Atman, the eternal self, the silent witness to all experiences. The Stoics like Marcus Aurelius taught the same thing. He wrote, observe your mind as if you were standing outside yourself. Note your thoughts without attaching to them. Even Einstein pointed to this when he said consciousness is fundamental to the universe, not just a byproduct of matter. And now quantum physics is catching up to what the mystics knew thousands of years ago. Consciousness isn't in the universe. The universe is in consciousness. Your sense of self, your personality, your story, your identity. That's just a story your mind constantly writes and rewrites. It stitches together memories and experiences like an overworked novelist. But here's the genius of the human mind. It can stand aside from itself. It can watch its own processes. Engineers call this a feedback system. It's how machines control themselves by observing their own actions. Your mind does the same thing. It observes itself, corrects itself, evolves itself. But the observer isn't the mind. It's what watches the mind. In exactly 90 seconds, I'm giving you a simple 30 second technique to experience the observer right now. No meditation cushion required. Here's how to access the observer right now. This works whether you're sitting in traffic, standing in line, or lying in bed at night. Step one, notice your thoughts. Don't try to stop them. Don't judge them. 
Just notice them like you're watching clouds pass by. I'm thinking about dinner. I'm worried about that meeting. I'm remembering something embarrassing from 10 years ago. Step 2. Ask yourself who is noticing these thoughts. Not what am I thinking, but who is watching me think. Step 3. Rest in that awareness. That space between thoughts. That silence that notices everything but says nothing. That's the observer. Your thoughts are like background noise at a coffee shop. The observer is the space the noise happens in. The more you practice this, the more natural it becomes. Like learning to ride a bike. At first it's awkward, then suddenly it clicks. You stop trying to be the observer. You realize you already are. And when you make this your default mode, everything changes, your anxiety loses its grip. Your thoughts stop controlling you. You become unshakable. Let me show you how. Here's the secret. The observer is already your default mode. You've just been distracted by the inner commentator for so long. You forgot. Even animals do this. Cats sit in complete stillness for hours. Dogs rest without fidgeting. So-called primitive people in almost every culture practice long periods of quiet sitting. The art is most difficult for those of us who've developed our intellect to the point where we can't stop predicting the future. We're trapped in constant activity to distract ourselves from our own minds, but to be incapable of sitting and watching with the mind completely at rest, that's to be incapable of experiencing the world fully. You don't know the world just by thinking about it and doing things in it. You must first experience it directly, without jumping to conclusions, without the inner commentator narrating every second. In Buddhism, they call walking, standing, sitting and lying down the four dignities, because these are the postures the Buddha nature assumes in the human body. You don't need to be meditating. You don't need to be in a temple. You just need to be present in whatever you're doing. That's the observer. Watching. Always watching. And here's what happens when you surrender to this completely. When you stop fighting it and just let yourself dissolve into pure awareness. Most people are terrified of losing their mind. They're afraid to fall through the void with nothing to cling to. They don't know that the void isn't really the void. It's the real realm of the divine. It cannot be looked for or sought, cannot be comprehended by wisdom or knowledge, cannot be explained in words, cannot be contacted materially or reached by achievement. Yet to surrender to this seeming abyss, that's to awaken to dissolve into the infinite and realize you were never separate to begin with. The void is not emptiness. It's the womb of all things, the source from which thought, form and time itself arise. And you, the real you, the observer you've been watching this entire cosmic dance since the beginning. So the next time your inner commentator starts narrating your life, criticizing your choices, hyping you up or tearing you down, just notice it, watch it. Let the observer do what it does best. Watch without judgment, notice without reaction. Because you're not your thoughts, you're not your emotions, you're not even your inner commentator, you're the space all of that happens in. The unchanging awareness, the eternal witness, the observer that quantum physics proves is fundamental to reality itself. If this shifted something in you, drop a comment below and tell me what did the observer notice while watching this video. And if you want to go deeper into how quantum physics proves consciousness creates reality, watch this video next, where I break down the double slit experiment and why it changes everything. You're not just watching videos, you're collapsing quantum possibilities into your new reality. Welcome to reality, quantum shift.